What's up, StarCraft fans? Today we're doing the tier list for like swatting insects on Cradle of Death. Brian, let's hear the mutation. Cradle of Death is the map where constructs guard specific points that we have to destroy. These constructs are invincible unless we bring a truck nearby to make them vulnerable. Then we destroy them and both players need to deploy the trucks in the guarded spots to destroy the objectives. Missiles fly in from the sides and hit our buildings. Infested spawn from enemy buildings and doodlings spawn from fallen and enemies. So we have Evil Link and Tutu in the call rest day. How are you guys? Great. Doing good. I got to spend some time with friends I haven't seen in seven years this last weekend. Oh, that's incredible. Meeting meeting old friends is certainly an experience of its own. I actually had a bit of that when I, yeah, my high school friend, I met him last year after Ooh. a decade of not having spoken to each other or something. How, how was that experience for you? Was it pretty surreal or? No, it was just, it was not surreal. It, it was definitely something that I, that I sorely missed because it was nice mm -hmm. having someone who is also a nerd to talk to. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I, I was, I'm very much surrounded by normal people. Anyway, let's begin. L how do we rate the commanders this week, Tutu? So there are a lot of factors for this one. One, dealing with missile command, which will destroy your buildings if you can't. Uh, second is dealing with constant trickles, which is from Outbreak. Third is dealing with in alien incubation, so you need AOE. And the extra one, fourth one, is ground presence on the offense, because if you you don't have ground units, your trucks will keep getting killed. Yes, they so will. So you need to have good ground forces to stop the armed the, the brutelings from killing your trucks, and which will slow you down a lot. I actually thought you were going to say the fourth one was whether your ally or is willing to move the truck. But how about you, Eveling? So this is rated as a brutal plus two, but uh, for those who are have experience with it, it's it's definitely its rating is not too bad. But it has several things going for it. So its cradle of death is one. So that's a already a kind of like a mutator in its own which your mutator is your ally moving the truck or not um the bigger ticket item of as tutu is hinting is missile command you don't deal with that your buildings are gonna go kablooey and you got pdds flying around everywhere and then eventually you start having nukes to deal with and so that's a mutator that escalates on top with outbreak outbreak is another mutator that escalates you get small trickles infested which yeah. then turn into eventually five up. aberrations charging your base yes do not let it get to 20 minutes if you can let's begin yes abather what do we have him? so abather um the good thing about this map is that you have a truck to help you lure instead of using a spore crawler so you save a bit of money there the bad thing is that uh the alien so, yeah. the, the broodlings will take up um they'll, they'll take they'll waste toxicness uh fortunately it's not too bad so so you lose some, but you can still get an early Brutalist to uh, help you clear the first area. And uh, you, you should be able to defend against Missile Command easily because Brutalists, they just destroy. You can deep tunnel anywhere to the missile and kill it. And uh, I would say that in the late game, you just use Leviathans and Swarm Hosts and you leave your Brutalists at home so that uh, you don't get killed by nukes and stuff. You can also mass lots of evolution chambers as like uh, magnets for the missiles or just spore crawlers if you want with your t tons of extra minerals. minerals. Since uh, since Brutalists have good AOE, they're gonna do very well early on, and then when the missiles come, they can stay back and deal those. So uh, I put Abathur in A. How about Evilink? I actually have Abathur in S to A. So a lot of the points that Tutu made, plus make use of your mineral flow, um, either evolution chambers, spore crawlers. Um, Abathur is great because he has that offense, but he also has good defensive with his Toxic Nest and Swarm Hosts. The only thing is just keep in mind with all that alien incubation outbreak, Break. They're all they all produce units that do not generate biomass, so it will be a little tough getting that biomass density. But it's it's still Abathur. Um, one more note regarding for the luring: please do not put your toxic nests next to each other. Space them out, especially for the initial luring on the first set of constructs. You're going to kill the enemies, then a bunch of broodlings will come out, and if you have a bunch of toxic nests together, then you're going to be essentially just wasting yes, nests. Correct. How so, important is, or how often do you use men to heal buildings as opposed to your army? I would say it's incidental. It's like I'm. 
using it to heal my army and it heals buildings just like as a bonus. All right. So we don't actually we don't actually consciously mend our buildings. Just whenever we use mend on our army, it kind of just heals our buildings by accident. Yeah, most likely you will have an, an army unit that's kind of in a dan in a danger point where you don't want to lose it. And in the incident is you're going to be healing your building. So it works out okay in the timing. It's only if you have some critical infrastructure that's about to go out, then maybe you might pop men to keep that up, but All very right. unlikely. So Tutu, are you convinced for S or just are we just just to give an A? I, I don't think it's S because you gotta you have to know how to lure, and it's like the the the, the broodlings make it harder than usual. So yeah, I would say he's good, but I don't think he's like makes the thing the mission trivial. And like deep tunneling to missiles, you have to pay attention. Yeah, I actually had Abathur in his usual B, but both of you guys had him in A, so let's put him in A. Alarak, where do we have him? Alarak, I have him from A to B, so. So for Alarak, one thing that we need to mention is the concept of hit scan. So hit scan being that if your attacking animation has a projectile to it, that is not hit scan. A hit scan is just as soon as it goes off, it's going to hit whatever its target is. Alarak doesn't have that many means of hit scan other than destruction wave, Alarak's basic attack, and death fleet. Yes. But the other aspect is death fleet has a lot of hit scan, especially if you start going destroyers. The problem with Alarak is missiles come from many different directions and you're going to have to be splitting your army. So try not to F2A move. I mean, you can. So the other aspect is Alarak is known to be a very potent speedrunner. And so if your allies on board, you can try to clear the map before it starts getting really bonkers with nukes and aberrations charging your base. Win before but, 20 minutes. Exactly. So A to B. How about you, Tutu? Uh, with P3, he's like, basically, he has no problem against missile command because you just patrol destroyers. Like you have like small groups of two to three patrolling like in a, like a square kind of, and then they'll kill what, and they also as a bonus, kill the outbreak units before aberrations come. Uh, so Alarak has great AOE, which means that he is great for pushing Alarak, Mothership, some supplicants, Havoc or two, and then a few more destroyers. And that's like enough to just power through any base. Empower me, everything's gonna die. Or at least like you push through really easily, yes. really strong. You can't use F2, which is like, uh, if you have that habit, this is not a commander. This is not the commander to use for this week. Yes. Um, you just patrol like, I, I don't know how, I don't have a good number, but you just patrol a lot of destroyers i will also add like havocs because they're invisible and they add damage to the missiles that the destroyers are hitting so you get extra that free damage basically you just put like a destroy a havoc at each like possible entrance very nice it just spread, spread him uh i put him uh, oh and for 20 minutes um i before that i think i built wrath walkers so and i left them at home so they'll like shoot aberrations as long as they're not shooting point defense drones or missiles yeah. yes <laughs> I, and I'll, you also have overcharge so that will work. You can overcharge like when uh, when those aberrations come. Uh, I put him in A. All right. So I think all of us had him in A. I also had Alarak in A. So let's just have him in A. Without prestige, has to be uh, low, right? Definitely not because yeah, he can't deal with missiles. A. Probably don't drop down to C, maybe. I think C. Uh, I would put him C, D because yeah. he still push as well, but he can't deal with the missiles as easily. So he has to end the game in 20 minutes. So it's, it's, I with, think it's a C. If it's, not P, if it's not P3. All right. Arcturus, where do you have him? Uh, he has... Uh, ESOs. Yes. He has bunkers. Bunkers are hit scan. ESOs are also great. Um, the thing is that you still need a standing army because you need to protect the trucks while they're moving on their way to the to the uh, next area. Um, Objective. I yeah. I would say I put him in A because he's easy. But like, uh, if, if the last area is the bottom right, you can't really ESO it because yeah, it's not. You, and if you have since you have an ally, you can't like use their base area either. So. So it's kind of hard to hit the bottom bases with ESOs. Just so you it. can clear the first, you can nuke it, but like, how long are you going to wait? So by, by, by 20 minutes, you probably have cleared enough stuff and you have, uh, like a, you probably have, you're probably maxed out because you just have like two armed troopers in bunkers spread, like spread around your base and you will be safe from any of the mutators. Uh, hits, the mutators. Well, uh, I would put uh, a few more, uh, uh, maybe tanks or something, one or two tanks to stop aberrations, but, or like an extra bull bunker just where aberrations often come but you don't need too many of those all right so yeah hey, hey. how about you eviling oh i'm a little biased for octurus because i play him a lot and i have him as my first s um but willing to concede to a he one of the major things he has his bunkers you got to build them regardless and they have hit scan as long as you're putting in assault troopers your regular troopers or um or yeah 
those only those two. Um, you can put in rocket troopers to supplement if you have to deal with the air combo. But yeah, don't go too heavy on the rockets because those are not hit scan. His something that I see that a lot of Minx players do is they just make a bunker farm, so they're not utilizing their bunkers for this particular for missile command. Spread them around, spread them for every little nook and cranny you think a missile can uh, seep through into your base. If you put the bare minimum is like two unequipped troopers, they will handle quite a few incoming missiles. And as the game progresses, you can give them assault guns and they'll take care of most of the missiles coming in. After if you do that, spreading out all your bunkers, have, have all the hit scan points taken care of, you're going to rack up way more kills than your ally, hands down. All right. As for the aspect of trying to reach the last assets of the map, if you're, if the objective is on the right side, so the ground side, you uh, keep in mind, so definitely make ESO so you can hit the other construct areas. But if you need to hit that last area when it's out of reach, mm -hmm. contaminated strike still hits. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. So that can buy you time to push in. Uh, by then, you'll have economy going, send in prior to August grads, um, contaminate strike the area, get them into the fear mode, run your truck in, uh, focus down the construct, and just rush shambo it. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think we all are okay with A. So we'll have him in A. Let's move on. Dhaka, where do we have him? <laughs> Dahaka, so people say Dahaka's bad against Missile Command. He is, but only in the beginning. Once you get, once you survive early on, if your buildings aren't all dead, you will be fine. So he deals with nukes actually fairly well because you can you can summon a greater primal worm, use the Q ability on the nuke, and it'll just go away. Then yeah. you can deep tunnel back to base and help defend. It's just that in the beginning, your build orders and stuff get messed up because you'll lose like primal wardens, extractors. If you don't defend your hive, you might even lose the hive. So uh, mm. Um, that's in that from that perspective, he kind of sucks. Uh, but since you're building, you're gonna need creeper hosts to defend against the missiles. They're gonna also defend against outbreak just fine. So uh, what you need is to attack. And with P2, a pack leaders pack leaders have ground presence, and they're actually very good at clearing stuff. And they all have AOE, so uh, attacking is not, not so a problem. Bad. Yeah, so you can kind of speed run this. Like uh, you, you're gonna bleed a lot of buildings, and you might lose like Mervars. Merv of ours then when you like when you don't when you don't expect it um i would actually even well with an ally i guess you can expand but uh you don't really need to expand you just put all your stuff in one place and you can defend everything from there if you expand you have to spread your stuff out and that might like you can't you can't expand and then uh abandon your natural after 15 minutes when the nukes come that's also an option uh but anyways i put uh the haka and d uh wow d so much so much he's not that bad and he ends up in d anyway <laughs> how about you eviling yeah i've got a surprise here D. <laughs> I had the Haka and C for pretty much all the same reasons. The Haka, I mean, he's known for speed running, so the Haka's on the time clock pretty much. He needs to have be aggressive. He needs to have an ally that's on the same page in order to end the mission sooner than later because it's going to become an issue and he's going to struggle. And again, this is for Bruto plus two, so that's a little hard place to be. So D C, I am willing, uh, more than willing to. to to go with Tutu on D on this. All right, uh, I'm gonna sound a little bit silly, but I actually had the Haka in B because of his pushing power. And I don't think, I don't think that I've actually seen the Haka lose. That was a very specific, you might lose Mervart then ra randomly. I bet Tutu <laughs> did actually lose Mervart at one point. Anyway, uh, I haven't tried soloing this with the Haka. I, in fact, I haven't even played this with the Haka. So I actually, I actually had it in B, but both of you guys say D, so let's have him in D. Phoenix, where do you have him? Phoenix. Another Protoss commander that has hit scan issues. His only hit scan is the Dragoon suit. So using the Solarite Flare, you should be able to knock out Nuke with one strike. So just try to make sure to have that available. Otherwise, Phoenix's best bet is trying to overwhelm the PDDAs as they come through. He has a lot of attacking power. Um, your oh, let me correct myself. His, he has one more hit scan. Calarian, his air attack does is a hit scan. So between those two. You, you can reliably take out nukes as they come into your base, but you're going to be frantically trying to figure out how to defend your base from all these trickles of alien incubation, outbreak, missile command. I have Phoenix in C. Okay, that's not that bad. Do conservators reduce damage to buildings? No. They don't. Oof, that's rough. How about you, Tutu? I thought carriers were hit scan. I don't think so. They just, they just shoot so many projectiles that they immediately consume all of the 
point of energy. They overwhelm. They just overwhelm the point of energy. Energy. Anyways, I I try the defensive strat where you just because on other missile command mutations I just mass carriers and then like have them patrol even on P2 that's enough to like kill the missiles that come for some reason this one it didn't really work so I went the other route which is uh this Speed is run. what I usually do with uh Stepman as well which is I use the hero unit to deal with nukes and everyone else just go fight so like the regular missiles they'll they'll like get shot down by cannons or whatever and then uh I was in speed run full speed run mode with P2. <laughs> And with Kaldalis, he has great ground presence. He'll just like swipe through everything extremely quickly. Warbringer is really good too. After 20 minutes, I left uh, Taldrin at home because he's uh, and his immortal friends, they'll fight Aberration. And then everyone else went on offense. Uh, yeah. I put him in C because uh, you got want to be. You have to be on top of. You have to pay attention to the mini map to shoot down the, the nukes and then switch out to let the sh let the uh, suit regen energy. So you have All to really right. pay attention. Ooh, you're gonna All have right. to split your attention many different ways. Okay, C. Uh, where did I have Phoenix? They even I, I think I had Phoenix in D, but both of you guys say C, so let's have him in C. Hot and Horner. Where do we have him? Hot and Horner. Oh man, I just tried them today. They're, they're they just keep leading units through whole, to the uh, to outbreak basically. Um, um, they have the they have flying reapers which are good against nukes. They uh but they're not flying reapers aren't really good against outbreak. Um the hellbats are good against alien incubation and outbreak to some extent, but they're bad. They don't do anything to missile command. It's really hard to push. You can like have two two galleons out of your five and then build like hellbats and push along with strike fighters and other top bar. But yeah, magmines aren't really good unless you're P1 where where they can be used immediately. Otherwise, a missile might trigger them with before or you want to. Um, they have ways to push. They have ways to deal with nukes very, fairly well. And they're Terran, so they can repair. So I put them in C. <laughs> Just because of repair. <laughs> I have a feeling the only reason they're C is because of repair. <laughs> Uh, Evil Link, how about you? I also have Hound on Horner and C. I'd just like to add a few things. So their salvage passive is going to help with their losses that they're going to be taking. They're, they're going to bleed out regardless. But it helps stem that and also helps stem it for your ally. It, they also have another way to deal with nukes that I don't see many people use. The DMOS Vikings. They're wild missiles. If you get one DMOS onto uh, near a nuke and you launch one salvo of wild missiles, it'll take it out. Wow. That's funky. PDDs won't, won't, yeah, won't, they won't ignore be able to stop it. it. Yes. I, I, exactly. I, I, I was actually expecting you to say widow mines, but yeah, that sounds better. <laughs> I'm known for widow mines. Is that it? But yeah, they don't have this. These mut mutators are going to require you for a lot of defense. An alien incubation outbreak is going to play hell with you and on top of missile command. So they have offensive power, not too much on the defensive power, and it's going to hurt them. I actually also had Hot and Horn in D because the point defense drones intercept the airstrikes. That's really annoying. Extreme. That, that's one of his few sources of sustained damage, but my goodness. Anyway, yes, both of you had them in C. Let's have him in C. Karax. Where do we have him? Karax. So he does have hit scan, uh, monoliths. And monoliths are good for taking out nukes, good for taking out aberrations, not so good against alien incubation. So you're going to want his only AoE, or uh, not, not only AoE, but non-top bar AOE, which are going to be Colossi. That'll help you deal with a lot of the alien incubation coming into your base. You're going to want to hunker down, but you still need to go on an offensive somehow, and you need to have a ground presence. Fortunately, he does have good ground presence with his Sentinels, so that will be able to tie up a lot of things. Use your Spear of the Dune to clear the path for them. Once you can get up to the Constructs, just Orbital Strike them down or Solar Lance them. Don't, please don't use your Pure Fire Beam on the Construct and just let the pure fire oh, yes. beam just whittle on the construct. Please don't. But I have sit I have your... on B. Please he has a tool to do it. Oh B. Okay. How about you two too? So um, if you can place your buildings in a way that the uh, alien the the brutelings funnel to one spot, you don't actually need colossi. I didn't build colossi. I went. Uh, mm -hmm. I built carriers. So uh, carrier sentinel sentinels you definitely need because otherwise brutelings will surround the trucks and keep killing it. Uh, what I did for the first two areas was just I rushed the 
the trucks in and I blast uh, the construct and I ignore everything. The so, YOLO uh, method. Well, yeah, YOLO, I YOLO the Kratos first two carrots. areas. Uh, well, for the second area, I have to use a purifier beam to clear some of the enemies. And then I ignored like the first, the first construct and I just went into like the second or third, like directly to the, to the, the main ones that you need to kill and then blasted it. The, the ones that are uh, come later, they have too much HP, so you can't really blast them. Um, but anyways, like carriers are also good because as they're moving, they'll kill missiles and you have repair beam and uh, you don't have to worry about missile command or any of the mutators, really. You just have to like do the mission, but you're kind of slowed down. So I put Karax in A. Mm, she had Karax in S, believe it or not. <laughs> Mm. But yeah, what was the I, justification for S? I, I, I just I just have it because of the Wallace, Wallace and the the conservators and the carriers really work well against the mutators here. But I'm okay with A. What do you think, Eveling? I'm perfectly fine with A. I'm perfectly fine. All right, let's have Karak in A. Karagan, where do we have him? Uh, Karagan. So I I think well I like to use P1 versus missile command because uh, hydralis shoot really really fast and I just have Karagan on the ground. Later on, I add ultralisks a few so that I so that uh. She has some backup. I also put lurkers against the outbreak yeah. and the the rush of broodlings. Which, by the way, after every time an area explodes, broodlings will come to your base. So if you're not ready for it, you're gonna lose your workers and stuff, which has happened many times, even though I should have known. But yeah, so Kerrigan, if you're not playing P1, then you have Omega Worms, which are great for magnets, uh, missile command magnets. Plus, they allow you to get to the nukes quickly, so that you can just attack them to death. However, that requires you to be on top of things. Plus, like your your macro must be on point and all that. And you, uh, if you're using Hydra's patrolling, then you can't really F two. So yes. I put, if you're not using P one, then you don't need the Hydra's patrolling. You just like mass four crawlers and uh, Omega worms. But uh, yeah, you gotta pay attention. So I put Kerrigan in B. How about Eveling? B. That's pretty. I, I yeah, that's pretty generous. I have her in C. Kerrigan has the has the problem of how shoot up, and this is kind of more exacerbated because you have PDDs to deal with. P1, I, I agree with Tutu, is a good option for this. Your lurkers are going to help deal with alien incubation. Missile command, fast shooting hydras are definitely going to overwhelm it pretty quickly. And you, this is Kerrigan. She's going to float minerals eventually. Just go with the entire P1 model and make queens with all that extra minerals. And you have more stuff to overwhelm the PDDs. All right. And then so... for pushing, you have your ultras. So yeah, she has tools to do it. A little a little clunky. Uh, you might lose a few things. If you want to go with the Omega-1, Form, uh, tactic and yeah spam them out um, use them as lures but that you make the sacrifice and you might get a new coming in your way or something to that extent what do you think about C Tutu I forgot oh I didn't consider the air thing because if you're fighting an air enemy comp then mm -hmm. the hydras will like you lose a, you might lose quite a few of them unless you want you don't want to immobilization wave to deal with attack waves you want to use that on pu or pushing which Kerrigan I remember in the past we said she's great on this map because one immobilization wave, wave clears like everything. Yes. So that. But then like against air, I guess if that's a big factor, then I would say like maybe B is high. But at the same time, I think the only thing is air. So yeah. if you're not fighting air, then it's fine. So are you yeah. not willing to put him down to C? I don't think she's as bad as like Phoenix on horror because she does have like slide. She slides and that's great AOE and she can spend early game like up until the mid game. She just needs herself. Yes. Like, you don't need anything else. So you get lots, you can spend a lot of time macroing up safely to get so that you have the proper defenses against the stronger stuff. I can't believe I haven't used carry slide before. My goodness. So Eveling, how about B tier? What do you think? I'm okay with B. I'm just curious, Tutu, what do you think about P2 for this? P2 is good because um, it's great against like any enemy comp and um, the, the lightning is also like if you see the nuke coming, you hit your own Omega Worm and then you slide towards the nuke and you will hit it. So I, I remember I did this uh, for the previous missile command, the one on Vermilion Problem, where I did Kerrigan only, and uh, that's how I hit missiles that were uh, a little, little bit far. I use uh, the Beery plus Lightning, and then it'll hit a missile. But then you can't. Yeah, immobilization wave is not as strong. Uh, I'm okay with B. I'm also okay with C. So I think I'm gonna ha have to let you two decide this. Did it, does she go in B or does she go in C? Evil said he's uh, okay. I, he's okay with Kerrigan in B, but uh, Tutu didn't necessarily say that he's okay with Kerrigan in C. But he did. He did concede that she does have air problems. So uh, 
Yeah. Does that ladder in B? So what what I want to add is that like uh, um, for Kerrigan, if you're playing P1, you have like an like a pretty good automatic nuke defense. As long as you have enough hydras, you don't really have to pay attention. Whereas like C, those people you gotta be on top of the nukes, or else they'll shoot you, or else you get hit. So B so or C. That will, yeah. I'd say put her in B for now, and we can as we circle back, we can decide if she really all right stays in B or moves back to C. All right, Nova, where do we have them? Nova. So she does have hit scan. Unfortunately, it's in the form of Marines. And do you, you want to be dropping Marines? What else are you going to send your say. minerals on? Exactly. Missile exactly. turrets? <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. I've seen it happen way too many times. So save up your charges of Marines. If you see the nuke coming in, figure out the direction that it's going to come in and drop the Marines in the intercept path. All right. And the other aspect is if you're out of charges of Marines, you also have ghosts that can hit scan. Nova herself can hit scan. She can snipe the, snipe the nuke out of existence. Don't use Goliaths to try to deal with nukes. In terms of the other mutations, alien incubation outbreak at each ramp, just dump your heavy siege tanks, poop spider mines whenever you can. That should handle most of it. Her pushing power is significant enough. I have Nova from A to B. A to B. How about you, Tutu? So for missile command, there are generally two things that I've seen people do. One is, which with the one, my my preferred method is mass marines, P1 mass marines, and you just patrol that, just like the hydras, and then you drop like Passengers. your ravens there oh, so ravens, that you yeah. can heal. Um, the other way that I've seen is um, you just ignore all the missiles and yeah. you repair and then when the nuke comes you use a seeker missile from the raven and they'll kill it. That's that's funky. But you have to be on top of it which I don't like. You have to like be paying attention and I don't like doing that so I prefer just patrolling marines and controlling nova and liberators. So I used P1 uh, bio but I use like four liberators my very few liberators which on offense which is enough. Nova herself has great ground presence but I think I added hellbats just like because I wanted more ground presence. And alien um, incubation. Yeah, alien incubation. And for defense at home, uh, the Marines Raven plus Siege Tanks. So Siege Tank will hit the, the infested Marines. So that, yeah. And uh, I put her in B because it requires a lot of work, but it's manageable. What do you think, Evelyn? B is okay? He's perfectly fine. I would just like to add for the P1 method, if you're making mass Marines, that means you're going barracks first. Remember, you still can make Siege Tanks. Just because you put down the barracks doesn't mean you 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 don't make factory or you don't make starport you just make sure when you drop those tanks drop that raven you don't lose them how do you guys oh. feel about just going p3 and having your entire army be defense and just waiting for nukes to clear the entire area uh, that is an option low exactly so i don't well your truck's gonna keep dying i don't know like like that's the true it's like entire area the truck will will keep dying but once the bases are clear you can just scoot them over to the one that needs to die and then snipe it and it's the dead. unfortunate part it's going to be very dependent upon your ally and we know where that goes hmm i'm not sure it necessarily depends on your ally because yeah if you if your ally clears earlier than you then great you get to save your nuke for the next the next uh, objective no it's like because if your ally is clearing and they don't see anything from you they might complain that's one two is that if you nuke them and they're not ready for it then they get surrounded by the brutings oh yep. oh that's true that's true well they can always airlift them out not even nuke even sabo drone could make them make a problem of brutings for them but if your entire yeah that's true that's true yeah that's true all right uh oh well it was it was worth a try i, I if that's what uh, that's what i would have recommended for players who aren't exactly let's say versed in all of the macro stuff and micro stuff in co-op but oh well i'm still okay with b though Everyone okay with B? Great. Yeah, it's okay with B. Let's put Nova in B. Rainer, where do we have him? Oh, it's our boy Rainer. Hey. So he has hit scan. Excellent. He also has spider mines, which wreck aberrations. Yes. And yes, so um I tried P1 and I kept dying at the third area because it's just like fire bats are nice, but I kept losing stuff because it kept getting overwhelmed. Then I played P0 and then so easy, destroyed okay. everything. Because <laughs> yes so much money yeah, so <laughs> I, much I money. forgot how p0 works so good uh, <laughs> yeah so um don't use p1 p0 um you just have medic marines and have few fire bats i guess to tank in the front and then you have like a separate control group to uh like for like eight eight spider eight vultures laying spider mines and if you f2 you just press your vulture group and send them back each time which i did quite a few times that, that's what i do um i put yeah i put oh and you push with the hyperion so you get the yes. extra damage Damage. Yes. Uh, I put I put Rainer in A. Mm, okay. How about Eveling? It's Jimmy's week. He's not E tier or any of his usual it's one areas. Of them. He has a few of these. 
Like they, they come yeah. up like once every ten or so. But he does have them. But Miss Missile Command definitely is Jimmy's Jimmy's mutator. And kind of funny how Tutu said, "Don't use P one." That's exactly what I said to myself when I was making the notes for this tier list: is <laughs> don't use P one because you don't have the money for it. Technically, you can do this mutation. I mean, of course, depend upon your ally moving their truck and everything. But you could do this mutation with just pure Marines. All right, and so... it's it's. It's going to be very inhumane, and we know someone in particular that will enjoy that very much. But it, yeah, it, with all that extra money, extra minerals, you're going to have enough pushing power. You're going to have enough to take care of missile command. And dealing with alien incubation is pretty minor with spider mine, siege tanks, or even banshees. Well, banshees not so much because they they're they're not hit scan. Letter. But yeah, A to B. All right, everyone's A, so that's A. Stat boy, where do we have him? Stat boy. He has problems with hit scan, but so repair. He can repair. He has green zone. It doesn't help with uh, building issues, but just repair it. Gary has super. Gary has immense amount of pushing power. And oh, I got a whole bunch of broodlings coming my way due to alien incubation. I have missiles coming at me. I have outbreak coming at me. He Gorbum. Yes, that's, per- that's a perfect solution. Get in there, and he's not. I wouldn't say he's S tier because he does have a few issues with defending. A especially if the mission goes on longer and it can get pretty hectic. But I have him from A to B. How about you, Tutu? So Statman, uh, his, ever since they nerfed his uh, his, his regular attack, it, he gets affected by PDD, so he's much worse against Missile Command now. Uh, however, he's still pretty good because um, against nukes, you use uh, Gary Zone if, necess- if necessary, and then you just go like... The direction... At, just face the face yeah. the nuke and then shoot the Igor. Shoot and then the kill, Igor like, in the same direction the nuke missile is going so if it's heading east you egorb going east if it's heading south you egorb going south so that the egorb well, tracks the missile and it keeps doing damage the whole way you can also just go the other way like if you're facing the missile you also kill it because with p2 is so strong that you just kill it that's true uh it'll just it, it'll just die but um for for defense i like put like one lurker in each in like i spread lurkers around and then uh with minerals i i had lots of extra drones just repairing stuff plus a few use four crawlers and the rest went to links and then for ground presence since gary is a flying unit i had ultralist and uh yeah but after 15 minutes i basically like uh my army's doing stuff and gary's paying attention and if like a missile's coming i gotta go back and deal with it otherwise uh i'll get nuked Alternatively, you can use corruptors and use their E ability, and that gets past PDDs and stuff. But that requires you to pay attention. Yes. Uh, yeah. I also did. Uh, I should do this more often, but like I burrowed an infester to tentacle Gary once in a while, so like he can E gorb more because sometimes two missiles come towards your base at the same time. But yeah, I put I put Gary uh, put Statman in B. All right. He's B. a lot of work. Yeah, I also had Statboy in B because he he is a lot of work. It does get a little hectic, and to, if you want to go for all that zergling stuff, you need to have of a lot of APM, aka holding down the Z button or something. Plus, yeah, it it, uh, it takes a lot of getting being used to macros. So I, I, I actually had it in B. What do you think, you Eveling? B okay? B is perfectly fine. I'll just like to add. Yeah. And this actually kind of justifies the B. Something that you need to keep in mind with Statman, you have stat lag, but you also have these three mutators that all add more to the lag. So right. expect that very, if the mission goes long, you are going to be at one FPS for quite a while, and which is not an enjoyable experience. So that already knocks him down, knocks him down a letter. All right, let's have him B. Now. Hmm, I actually feel like this might be a good week for Stukov. Where do we have him? Uh, I put Stukov in S because <laughs> there we go. <laughs> P3, P3 yeah. and P1 are both really good. So very good. P1, uh, the good thing about P1 is that your bunkers are always uh, full. So you, once you have them placed, you don't worry about any missile command, missiles and any more missiles. You don't have to worry. With P3, you kind of have to like drag and then drag some marine uh, infested Troopers. marines to kill a nuke if they're not in the direction that you're going or you have like a barracks that makes emergency marines which is a good idea for either p1 or p3 you're going to use tanks because when aberrations come you want tanks to help you p3 is a lot more carefree because you just set in a direction and like even though there's alien incubation they're gonna eventually die um yeah so uh with p1 you use diamondbacks 
to get your ground presence and uh you probably like deep tunnel a few tanks to help with the offense all right but yeah i put stukov s how about you eviling yes stukov means rejoice this is going to be your week i have him from s to a pretty much all the same points another thing right. you can deal for nuke or missile command defense infested liberators do great against it so all right you see a nuke Point incoming taken. just the secure liberators on it but you have to pay attention which also requires Stukov to not play like a Stukov <laughs> anyway. Unfortunately, but it allows him to split his attention. So you set side meter one side, oh, and you're coming in from another side, you have another thing that's not going to follow the side meter. So it, yeah. it has its Also with, with P3, the P3, mm -hmm. right? It's not yeah. Because right. if you're P1, you would have just bunkers. And yeah, not, you don't need yeah. to worry about it. So yeah. uh, that, that, to, those, to those guys who are probably accusing me and Tutu of being Stukov haters, that's two weeks in a row where Tutu and I both, well, not in a row, but when Tutu was here. Two, 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 two weeks in a row where both he and I agreed that Stukov was S. So there we go. Swan. Yeah, accuse them of being Stukov haters. They're not. Accuse me. I am. I am admittedly a Stukov <laughs> hater. And I'm still giving him S. Um, uh, let's proceed. Swan, where do we have him? Swan. So his ability to deal with missile command is pretty good. Laser drill. If nuke incoming, just point the laser drill directly at the nuke. PDDs can't do anything about it. Missile. His missile turrets overwhelms the PDDs. It takes a while to get Swan's missile defense online, but he can do it so a lot of commanders that we went through on this week they have problems that they're kind of on the clock you don't want the mission going long swan has all the tools to go long as yes. long as he can get his, his economy going i have swan from a to b how about you tutu uh i use p0 and uh because having the two top bars makes it really easy to clear areas and uh my army so missile command of course is just the usual missile stuff but while you're there you also have anti-outbreak stuff so e even when aberrations come you just put like supply depots in front of your blaster billies Wait, and then yeah. they have to like walk around and yeah. they'll die the aberrations will die um because missile turrets are so good uh you're not gonna need to worry about any nukes so for offense i use uh science vessel goliath hellbat hellbat for the aoe and then goliaths for the anti-air and range and not then science vessels tank. for defense matrix all right uh I, yeah i put i put swan in a okay uh that's unanimous a right yes yeah yeah, yeah. Two, two. I was wondering, I was actually... have you tried the floating factory P1 on this? For just, just, just floating factory, it, it takes too long. That's what I figured. Yeah. Okay. I was actually wondering whether to put. Uh, uh, I was actually wondering internally where to have Swan and S, but I figured he's just not carefree enough or fast enough to be the S. Tychus. Yes. Where do you have him? Uh, Tychus, he's hit scan. Serious turrets are hit scan. Auto turrets are hit scan. Um, Crooked Sam. Yeah, Crooked Sam. He gets hit by splitter missiles a lot though, and then he dies. Um, Nux can storm nukes. Um, I think Vega can seal them, or at least bring them down or something. I don't, I don't know what happens, but I, she I don't. Them. She's also hit scan. Yeah, but anyway, she can uh, she can yeah. steal them, but they are still gonna land. So when they <laughs> land, they still do damage to you. So there's no point in stealing them. Other than for yeah. YouTube video. <laughs> but exactly. but either, anyways, points. Tychus has great pushing power and he he's on the ground so he has ground presence against enemies um odin nuke clears an entire area basically and with a uh, cooldown you basically like clear each base whenever it's off you clear like an entire area when it's off cooldown or when you, when it's available um later on you, you don't need that much gear because the enemies aren't stronger so you don't really need a lot of the gear you can just spend those spend those minerals on turrets make sure sure that you leave space for them to be able to be repaired otherwise yes. like they'll just burn down in the middle they'll burn down but if you have like a lot of auto turrets clumped together they'll actually shoot down the splitter missiles afterwards so like you don't have to worry about them getting damaged if you spread cool. them out they actually are weaker so it's good to have them like covering one whole side and then um have like an outlaw on another side cool but yeah i put tychus in a oh why not s uh let's move oh wait uh eviling first eviling where do you have him <laughs> nope i have tychus from a to b he's it's going to require a little work. I, I would highly suggest P2 because you want to spread your outlaws around uh, hit scan outlaws and also supplement that with turrets. All right. When sorry, yeah. uh, when you're going going about pushing, if you're pushing with Tychus, be careful on how you use your grenade because you throw a grenade on a clump of enemies and you got a bunch of broodlings to deal with and you just might have to just bail Tychus out with a medevac. So be mindful of that. A to B. All right, so why not S? That'll work. 
lot of really? Tigers are a lot of just, like, like, I guess really Tigers will I don't think you can push with Tigers alone. You will probably have Sirius behind him throwing turrets and then yeah. walking away. All right. But, you guys say yeah. it's, you guys say A, let's have an A. Also when aberrations come, your your auto turrets are going down. So you're gonna need Vega to steal aberrations. All right, fair. That's what she's good. Vorazun, where do we have him? Vorazun, she has hit scan that not too many people know. Some some people don't even know her starport exists or Stargate. So really? Corsairs are great. That's... I've met so many players that just make nothing but DTs. That's they crazy. do not know that Oracles exist, do not know Corsairs, and surprisingly do not know everyone a lot of pubs favorites void rays come to think of but, it i actually don't meet a lot of wars and players in general that's actually yeah i don't meet a lot of wars and players in general in the solo queue that's wild anyway continue so her hit scan corsairs are great void rays actually do pretty good against a lot of the missile command portion of it the other mutators alien incubation outbreak dts so her tried and true dt and corsair is an effective means problem is you can't concentrate your army you're gonna have to not f2 you're gonna have to put put things on patrol and it gets a little much to organize but she can push time stop is a huge help. asset at help asset and it'll, it'll allow you to take down those constructs get the mission going and it does delay things so that if you go past 20 minutes you actually do have a little buffer if you keep on using time stop uh, because the mission is a little further behind of when things spawn etc etc I have her from B to C. B to C. How about you, Tutu? So, uh, to add on to what Eveling said, it's just basically patrolling Corsa Corsairs. Um, the buildings that get hit by Missile Command, aside from the Dark Pylon, get like they get regen really quickly. So before you get enough Corsairs, you, you probably won't lose anything. Um, you can also Dark Pylon wall against the Infested and the Alien, uh, the Brulings. So um, later on, I like to like have the DTs not have to blink out from my control group. So I destroy one the pylons later on but then before that you can like uh just have a dark pylon wall against all the infested all right. and um i would actually make centurions because not a lot just enough so that they, the broodlings don't touch your truck mm. they have something else to hit while your dt's cooldowns are like recovering or something that's really cool uh yeah uh i that's i make centurions a lot just to like have something for the enemy to hit because my whole army is invisible Dealing um, with mineral flow and full yeah. cans are not really yes. gonna do much against missile command. Yeah, so uh I put Warzone in B. You can't F2. Alright, so. so both of you have in B. I actually had him in C this time, but I'm okay with B. Let's have him in B. Zagara, where do we have him? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so No, I they can't Zagara be worse. F. There's no way they're worse okay. than Artanis, right? No. That's why no, she's uh, she's not worse than Artemis. So uh, um, uh, that's why I don't think it will be. But I put Zagar and F for similar reasons. Um, pushing power is really bad. Um, you can make aberrations, but they're not like great. Then your free free banelings are gonna be wasted on Amon's free broodlings, which is not a good trade. Um, if you're using P2, you don't get free banelings, which um, even though you even though they're not good for trading, you still want them like to to use against against. Uh, nukes, you have bio launchers, but those are very hard to aim. And yes. you have Scourge, which Scourge, if you try to, if, if you just build a bunch of Scourge, they'll target random missiles and not what you want. So you have to like manually control a few Scourge and click the nuke, which is sometimes like, the, the clicking the nuke is like slightly off where you think it yes, is. Yes, that's annoying. So yeah, um, for similar reasons as Artanis, I put Zagara in F. Uh, same thing, it's like, you're gonna, if, if your ally doesn't push quick you're gonna die all right you're gonna die how about you Evelyn? brutal but i agree with it so this week stukov players rejoice zagara players p1 players very sad face so pretty much all that is everything's been said of why zagara deserves her place you're not going to be able to use scourge you're going to scourges are going to be wasted on on silly things and it's kind of Almost when Tutu said it is counterintuitive that Zagara doesn't have pushing power. She does have pushing power, but she doesn't have sustained pushing power. And with all this alien incubation and outbreak coming at you, your bailings aren't, aren't going to do much. You're going to be relying a lot on your ally. So, yeah, F. Wait, so you think Zagara's worse than Artanis for this one? I would at least Artanis doesn't have stuff that's going to be just her main anti air is Scourges. Okay. And that's at least Artanis has anti air that's not 
going to just load themselves up on just like a regular missile for missile command. This is going to be a weird result because similar to what we did for Artanis, I don't think Zagara helps Artanis that much to warrant them being an F. But both of you actually had an F. So whatever feelings I might have regarded, I actually had Zagara an E. We have to put Zagara an F, which would put them lower than Artanis. That's so funky. But that's how it, that's how it works. That's how it works. There we go, Zagara and F. Um, how I would feel is, remember 2-2 when we did Railroad Switch as Abathur and Hot and Horner? That's yeah. how I feel like two Fs should should interact <laughs> with the with a weak mutation. What, we did our run in one try. A, a very fun try, but one try regardless. So that's why I don't think that they're F. Because if both commanders are F, you and I should have way more attempts than that. And way more fine-tuning, way more... We, ha we have more attempts for like medieval times than this one. Right? So I, I, well, that's why we know we had a fixed plan and we both like we did a fast expo, which like with Artanis, which you can't do with random. Yes, we, we both had, had a fixed plan. Your plan was uh, play like Tutu. My plan was listen to what Tutu said. <laughs> 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 all right all right so the, the, this is how it shakes out one e one f regardless of uh how the actual game played out zeratul where do we have him zeratul very consistent commander just gotta get him going and on this mutation you don't have anything pressuring you early so he'll be able to get his all his cannons online and please people don't just make cannons make have have ambushers, shield guards. have shield guards whatever's they are hit scan to push into push into the area Cannons are going to get overwhelmed by your alien incubation outbreak, even even though you're shade projecting them, and you want to end this early. I mean, yes, you can you can delay the mission and make a whole bunch of cannons and and deal with it that way if your ally can hold out, but don't rely on that. I have him in A. Okay, how about you, Tutu? Um, I'm just gonna say that Zerato is so S that I got both bonuses. <laughs> I went for both bonuses because spin to win, man, just wins. It's just so strong. Uh. Like I. I don't have my army is all at home like all shield guards and they're just shield guards shooting spread missiles. around they kill they kill nukes they, they they'll poke nukes to death monoliths will stun the nukes and then like cannons will uh, i don't i don't uh i don't project the monoliths because i want to make sure that they're always there because they mm. stun the infested but i project the cannons for help and i have telbris and and herald just spins around and kills everything so <laughs> i put him in s because it's just that easy uh, even that easier than stukov that. easier than stukov i, I had zeratul in a but but okay, that's that's crazy. Uh, I I need to see that video then. Uh, what do you think, Eveling? Are we just gonna take Tutu's word for it? I have oh, no idea. I, I, I have no idea how it works in practice. But if Tutu says it's S and an easy S, then I'll I'll just kind of believe it. Yeah, against, I, tech. I guess we're liberated on the uh, uh, no, no less. My goodness. That's the that's the BS that that P three zero tool is. It can it can do it. And P three P three. If it was if it was any other prestige, I I would be a little questioning. But you just say P three zero tool. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that that makes that. Makes makes perfect sense now i guess i just have just to for the sake of saying it p102 if a nuke is incoming and you were to use the void seeker to 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 super cloak that entire area would is are would things be safe no right they're still targeted so. yeah they're still targeted yeah, yeah. okay okay it just super cloaks them doesn't prevent them from taking damage to mutators but mm -hmm. all right so this is the one an another week where we just kind of take two two sword for it there we go i'm gonna have to play zeratul in this one to, to actually see what the hype's all about in fact they probably already <laughs> did anyway does any does is tutu so good that he's double s or he, is he just single s no he's not double s all right he's not that it's all not, right you still gotta work you get so, your bonuses though <laughs> <laughs> rankings that juicy 3000 xp rankings who's top of s i put zero to all right we'll just kind of believe it there we go stukov second in s for a who's top of a i think tychus uh, right no not tychus no, no. manx Manx I would be Terax. or I would I would put because like Tychus when the nukes come you kind of have to pay attention a little bit that whereas like the uh, Manx Carax and Rainer and Swan they don't you don't so have to even look those four that are the top of A Arcturus Carax Rainer and Swan those four are the you top of A you just focus all on offense all right. Once so you have your defenses set up. Among those four, who are the top? Arcturus? I'd say Arcturus. He has a lot more easier spread All right. to deal with Missile Command. Hey, uh, uh, Zeus, remember, whenever anyone says the word spread, just put that toast on there. 
Uh, and then who's next? Swan? I'm because torn between Abathur sounds, or Swan right now. It sounds so straightforward for Swan. Just push in with Siege I would say Tanks Swan because he's, he's, Swan's a lot safer because he has the yeah. flaming, flaming Betty. Yeah. yeah, I think Swan too. All right, let's put Swan. And he has the, the top bars if you don't go for the first prestige. All right, and then it has to be Karax, right? Or Rainer. Yeah, if you have carriers, then Karax should be completely fine, I think. Ka I, I would say Karax above Rainer because of Repair Beam plus... Oh, yeah. You can like passively... Rainer, if your macro's off, if your army doesn't grow big enough, you're not going to have much pushing power. Yeah, that, that's one thing I can say about Rainer negatively, that is, for this one. You have a lot of things to... I have a lot of good things to say about Rainer, but for this one, you kind of need to ramp up and... Critical mass. Yeah, get critical mass, and that takes a while to get to, so... Yeah, okay. Karax, higher than Rainer. All right. Then, after those four, who's next? Tychus? I still think Tychus... I actually think Tychus is easier than both Abathur and Alarak. In fact... I think Alarak's better. You think Alarak's better? Because, because when you patrol destroyers, you stop the th you stop the missiles plus everything and he uh, alarak has great aoe a lot more aoe than tychus yes. all right fair all right let's have alarak in fifth place and then tychus uh okay and then abathur all right who's top of b is that boy i think or she has hit scan yeah yeah her hit scan solutions are better for set boy, you're relying on corruptors, Igorb. Yeah, not not the most solid forms of hit scan. All right, then Stepman. Step boy is Kerrigan bottom of B. Yes, because Kerrigan sucks against air. Sucks against air. There we go. Nova I can air strike the air. <laughs> Kerrigan <laughs> is Kerrigan is brute forcing her her way through all the PDDs. All right. For C, who's better, Phoenix or Hot and Horner? Phoenix. Phoenix. All right. All right. So there it is. So D, Dhaka top of D. There we go. Dhaka. D is the Dhaka. Tier. E is an Air Tannis tier and F is a Gara. So, do we have synergies between B to F that will collectively be better than Zeratul or Stukov alone? Mm, let's see. Trying to, trying to have a look here. Well, one of, them, one of them has to be good against the missiles, and none of them are that none great. None of them are that great against missiles. That's why they're there. That's why they're, they're where there. they are. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. So a Stukov or a Zeratul are better than any combination of B and below. Otherwise, just pick one A. There's There are a lot of options to choose from an A. There's a free commander there in Raynor. There's some of the most popular commanders. Karax, a very popular commander for this one. In fact, I'm going to hazard a guess and say that when I queue up on the solo queue, I'll probably get a lot of Karaxes. Yeah, mm. okay. Guys, I say you're going to get more Stukovs. More Stukovs? But I don't have a problem with that either. Guys, watch or Tutus swans. or Swans. I don't see a lot of Swans. I, I don't see a lot. I, I, I'm going to see way more characters than, than the Swans. Guys, watch Tutus channel. I will link it down below and I'll see you guys next time.